Once you choose hope, nothing is impossible. After watching Ethan Rinaldini, I got desperate to catch up with the director to know what was the cause, what was the intention that went into the making of such a wonderful piece, or rather, the epic of the future. Aaj, amar jibon ne shesh raat. Ami shichai, amar e jibon shesh kore dichi. Ama ke taan mare ratri jagano di. Ama ke taane gudho andho kar. Amar ghum bhenge hakhat khule jai. रात्रीर बंधुदार आमा के टांग मारे मंचे प्रवेश के समय टांग रहते चिलो ना किंतु प्रस्थान तत्व आज इति मृणालिनी। Well, not every good morning can be as good as this as I caught up with uh, Miss Calcutta of 1976. आमे मिस कलकत्ता चाइना दिते दिते actor, director, screenwriter and editor, Apurna Shin has been one of the most celebrated members of Indian film industry for the last five decades. In her early youth, charismatic and beautiful Apurna Shin was impressed by European cinema that strongly affected her art life. She started her film career as an actor at the age of 16 in the movie Shomapti, the final feature of the classic Teen Kunna by the renowned director Satyajit Ray. After Shomapti, Bakshubadol and Akash Kushum didn't do too well, then came Oporajito, which was her first commercial hit, even though she did not quite understand the medium. Her works in cinema and theatre appeared successively getting the praise of critics. As an actor, she got more praises when she acted in Rituparna Ghosh's Unishe April. <laughs> and also in a self-directed, highly acclaimed film, Paramitar Agdeen, which won the award of the Best Bengali Language Film in the 47th Indian National Film Awards. Oporna Shen or Rinadi, as she is affectionately called, is a perfect example of a rare combination of beauty and brains. She has been honoured with India's most prestigious Padma Shri Award in the year 1986 for her contribution to the Indian cinema. Three times national award winning director, she has also served on juries at many international national film festivals. She also won eight international awards for her admirable work as a director. She has taken the Bengali and the Indian films to the next level, keeping the great Satyajit Ray her icon, her inspiration. Indeed, a living legend who continues to enthrall the audience the way she did as Miss Calcutta of 1976. Good morning, ma'am, and welcome to TV South Asia. Good morning it's a to great you. pleasure and, and thanks for your time. Good morning to all the viewers, too. Okay, uh, straight question. What went in the making of a movie like Ether Minalini? Well, the, the germ of the idea had come to me a long time ago and I had uh, certain images of um, an aged or, you know, diva, and I, uh, a star. Uh, she's sitting there, I could see her sitting there with her all her memorabilia around her and uh, as she looks through her memorabilia before she decides to commit suicide, she um, she remembers things, memories flood the night. And through those memories, an entire life is revealed. So that's what, uh, I think that's, that's, that's the basic idea that I had. At that time though, I didn't know what would be the events of her life. Um, then uh, this uh, time, I mean, after finishing The Japanese Wife, I had attempted to make for the umpteenth time, uh, Goynar Baksho, the jewelry box the comedy that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Again, the project fell through. <laughs> and so then I thought, all right, why not uh, explore that idea again? And I thought it would be nice if I could cast myself and Konkona in the same role, you know, because there is a familial resemblance. And uh, then Ronjun Ghosh, who was a student at uh, Whistling Woods, had also worked in Ontuhin as a right. as an uh, assistant director and he approached me and he said he wanted to collaborate with me and I said well I usually write my own scripts myself 
uh, but I do have this germ of a story and all right, if you wish we can develop it together. And, and you were comfortable sharing this story with your yeah. Ranjun. Ranjun, yeah, Ranjun and I worked together and uh, we developed the story together, we developed the script together and then he wanted to use that as his assignment for his assignment at Whistley Wood, so I said of course. Tell me something, Miss Sen. Uh, your movies are rather not that conventional, not very commercially driven, although they are very commercially successful at this point in time. But uh, you always take the risk of making movies which are not so conventional. What gives you that impetus? Well, I think it's an artistic motivation more than anything else. I mean, I'm not here to... Um, to make films out of commercial motivation because if you're talking about commercial motivation I had been uh, an actor in commercial cinema for the longest time right. and I had a flourishing career there now why did I chuck that all up and then uh, you know um, decide to to direct because I was tired of acting in the kind of cinema that I didn't believe in and so I decided to make the kind of cinema I believed in and that has remained my motivation for making films that I want to why would I not take risks and I don't uh, I don't agree with this idea that you know this conventional uh, uh, commercial uh, ingredients will necessarily make a film uh, successful it's true that in Bombay in the mainstream uh, Hindi cinema what they do is that they have stars now when you have stars and uh, the interest in stars is huge today thanks to the media right. and thanks to constant you know exposure of, of stars lives and so on and so forth so uh, when they have stars then there is a lot of publicity people are interested in seeing and their current uh, marketing uh, technique is to uh, have many 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 prints and flood the market with those prints so people go and see the film and you know it releases on a friday by sunday they've got their money back and everything else is a bonus because people without knowing whether they will like the film or not they will go to the, see the film out of curiosity and sometimes of course the film is successful because the content is good and you know the film is good etc people like it and sometimes uh, you know even if the film is not successful in the sense that if the audience even if the audience doesn't like it so much the money comes back so that's one kind of marketing that is done but the kind of films with the kind of films I make I uh, don't really use stars that much I uh, frankly I haven't had too much luck with stars either and uh, you know the kind of subjects I deal with um, well because they are unconventional they have to be on a small budget so that the producer gets his money back and you can't afford stars on that budget anyway. So it's safe so, to have your own daughter? Uh, my daughter is which she is a star of sorts, but she's more an actor. She's known more as an actor than as a she's star. She's a brilliant actor. She's a brilliant actor. That on I the agree. lines of her mother itself. I think she's better. Actually, <laughs> she's much better. She's she's a very very instinctual actor. I mean, everything is very sensitive actor. Rather. Also, very spontaneous. Everything is completely instinctive. I wouldn't call her a cerebral actor at all. Okay. Though she is a cerebral person. All right. But when she's acting, I mean, I think the cerebral part doesn't come in so much. Or if it does, it comes in at such a such a uh, subconscious level that it's not apparent at all. So then, I don't think that uh, you know if you make unconventional stories, they will not be commercially viable. And I think I've proven the point. Let it all go up in smoke. Dish can't see my not 
You have proven the point and uh, uh, viewers who don't know uh, much about the background of Miss Sen, the kind of movie she has made, can you go, go through the Google and the kind of movie she has made? First of all, Poroma, Poromi Taragdi, Mr. and Mrs. Iyer, uh, 36 Chorangilin, The Japanese Wife, now Itin Minalini. Each and every story dwells with a strong content. You have a message to take back home and that's your intention, right? Uh, well, uh, message is not my intention, no. No? I am not a preacher preaching from a pulpit. Uh, okay. But, but film as a part of a media has a responsibility of uh, uh, delivering a message at the end of the day. And Mr. and Mrs. Iyer... I don't agree. You don't agree? I don't agree. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Iyer said started out by being a love story uh, about two people who have gone on a journey because I thought, well, you know, um, uh, an external journey, a physical journey. Do. Is a wonderful metaphor for an internal journey, a journey of Very mind. Um, people change, people develop, um, people find out things about themselves and about others. So that's how it started out. And because I've been so deeply concerned about uh, communal harmony, uh, because of that, I think uh, the characters became Hindu and Muslim. And because of what had been happening okay. in our country for some time, you know, the riot and Mr. all that Mr. came Mr. in. But there was no conscious attempt to send a message. Um, if a message comes through, because all human beings have some politics, you know, nobody is completely apolitical, even though they might think they are. Uh, they have some morality, some uh, social, uh, you know, opinions, some some politics.